Um, now, there's been plenty of judges that have pushed back, like the judge that pushed back against Biden's immigration policy this week, like the judge that's pushed back on the FOIA request on for judicial watch that outed some of these scandalous uh, failures to prosecute in the January 6th cases of the Capitol Police. Uh, so there have been plenty of judges that have pushed back, but you know, and prosecutors too. But I mean, on the upside, uh, I think this may have happened right before uh, I went on vacation. You know, the, uh, the, 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 the very problematic woke Soros DA in San Francisco, no less, got recalled. Yeah. So, you know, okay. there is some pushback. And we had a family, bring, a parents bring suits against the school team because parents continue to fight back. They fight back at the school board. They fight back with school board elections. They And now they're fighting back with suits and more cases, whether it's critical race theory or in this context, the teacher was trying to teach transgenderism to first graders. Um, I mean, I, I, so yeah, well, hold on before we get there. No, you know, let's just get there right now, Robert. What, what's the, what's the basis of the lawsuit? Like the legal foundation. Well, because the teacher's violating school rules, district rules, county rules, state rules, and federal law. <laughs> so that, that that's the combination um, because it's not an appropriate teaching material uh, for a for, – and there's often issues that – there's so many, there's usually local, county, state, federal rules that are implicated by what a teacher teaches in a public school, uh, particularly as it impacts gender, as it impacts race, as it impacts – you're not allowed to teach discrimination. You're not allowed to teach certain subject matters. Uh, to people of a certain age group uh, for the most part. And this is just, you know, the, but it, it's apparently the first grade teacher involved has decided her own child is a, a transgender child and is going to, you know, again, the idea that children at six years old are supposed to be deciding their gender is just nuts. There's it's, no it's, other way to put it. The F Fox News just ran a piece that uh, Ben Shapiro was exquisitely critical of, which I, and I listened to about two minutes of it, where it said, I, lo I lost it, not lost, I just stopped listening at before Haley, or was it Riley or Haley? Does, Riley or Haley, not to be mean, was old enough to speak. Uh, he, she, she was telling, he, I don't know which way it was going. They were telling their parents they knew they were a boy. So I guess it was B. He was telling his parents he knew. Before he could even speak, it's not I, I, at this point. It's, it's projected issues from the parents onto the kids, whether it's whether it's transgenderism or veganism, vegetarianism, whether it's anything. Children have, by and large, baseline uh, normal development, and I say normal. Not children will grow up to be a number of things, but when parents are projecting their own issues onto their kids, whether it's dietary, religious, or whatever. It's obvious. It's as obvious as when they say the kid couldn't even speak English, but somehow told the parents that they had gender preferences. I mean, it's it's, it's not politically incorrect to state the obvious, although maybe it is. Um, so, I mean, what what's the outcome of the suit? Is it is it injunctive relief? Is it monetary damages? Like, what's what's the remedy sought? They're seeking declaratory injunctive relief. They just want to stop the teacher from doing it. They don't want other teachers to to do it either. And and you're seeing it. Now in Texas, the litigation is going the other, the other way because the state was trying to uh, say that it's child abuse to try to do these transgender treatments, and a uh, the, the Texas courts are right now intervening and in not allowing the Texas state authorities to enforce those laws. Now in some of those things, I I think it's a closer call because I'm I'm very much a strong parental rights person, even if I don't agree with what a parent is teaching the kid, I I, I have a strong preference that the parent controls that outside of very limited circumstances, yeah, which would, which would be maybe permanent physical alterations to the body. I let the, let the parents make the wrong choices with their kids. So long as it doesn't involve, let's just say people look at like transition therapy as, as though it's therapeutic. Let's just say the kids that I want tattoos all over my body. It, you'd never get past the front door of any courthouse with the claim like that. So it's, it's just what's politically socially acceptable as far as controversial issues go. The, the line has always been when it gets to the point of like hormone therapy, because then it's physical impact that's lifelong on the child. And this gets into like the Christian scientist debate, for example. There's certain Christian scientists that don't believe in certain kinds of medical treatments for, for young children, not talking about all, just some. And the question is, is that a parental right or not? Where, where does that line draw? I generally just almost always fall on the, the parental line because you give the state that power, it's going to be misused and abused a lot more often than a parent's going to. 
uh, is my general takeaway. So I, I, but I do recognize it does get problematic or tricky when it gets into lifelong and physical impact on a child. No. Then it's okay. Where, where, where is that line? And, and, no, uh, and you, right and you get, now, you, get, in, you know, in you, Texas, the courts are favoring the parent at the moment, though they've, they've been all over the place on this. Uh, the well, they're going to they're going to call it the "Don't Say Gay" lawsuit at some point right, in time. Exactly. Uh, yes. And then and then you get some doctors saying it's totally reversible, even if you get the hormone therapy. Set aside the bone density alterations, delaying delaying puberty. You delay it enough, it doesn't happen. Okay. There's going to be a lot of medical malpractice suits, I think, coming down the road for when these kids become adults and are unhappy because it's already starting to happen. Yep. Where they say we were misled. I should not have been put through this therapy. It's uh, some of the effects are different than what I understood or could consent to. And in uh, in many cases, I mean, I think that the doctors that recommend this therapy are committing medical malpractice, in my opinion, because they're not properly at a minimum. They're not giving meaningful informed consent uh, because some of the things they're saying are not backed up by good evidence at this point. Forced name chains asked it. I mean, it's right on right at the point. But do you think a child who has transitioned young would succeed in a lawsuit later in life against their parents? I, I'm going to go and say yes against their mm -hmm. parents and against the doctors. Mm -hmm. And setting aside legislative immunity, well, that might be the next step. We're gonna immunize parents and doctors who do this. I yes. say yes, and obviously so. And I say that's gonna to have to happen before it sensitizes parents to caving to the whims. I'm not saying children in a demeaning sense. I'm just saying children are, children are idiots by and large. Like all decisions aside, children are idiots. They don't know what they're doing. They, they, at one point in time, my kid will say, I, 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 I want to, I want to eat candy all day long. They don't know what they're doing. They need responsible adults and responsible doctors. I say, yes, it'll happen when it starts happening. Then parents are going to say, maybe it's not going to be so cool for me to start posting social media posts about me catering to the whims of a four-year-old kid who can barely speak English, let alone determine the, the course of their future gender identity. Yeah. Robert, and if you want to see what kind of liability they could be in, just look at Geico that uh, right now is on the hook for a little more than $5 million because a woman got an STD uh, from a man who failed to disclose that uh, his, his status uh, because it was inside the car that was insured by Geico at the time.